Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And today we are looking at something that is very interesting uh, for Town Hall 10 attackers. It's the power of the bowler wall wrecker with the rage and the heal. Something we see a lot in the Frozen Witch attack strategy, where you bring that bowler uh, wall wrecker and you deploy it like right in the middle of the base. Um, I want to highlight some attacks that that use the wall wrecker with that rage and the heal and show the insane value it gets and why it's so powerful, why you should look to use it, and a few uh, recommendations that you might not think about when using it. Now, this first attack was my own. It is a Lalo attack, and you can see here the insane value you can get right there. It throws the balloon, because I hate it when the balloon drops a bomb and destroys all five bowlers. That can ruin an attack very quickly. So froze the balloon, rage and heal. We get the queen, the inferno. Um, obviously the CC is not really an issue, although it does explode over here. But this, all these defenses, the second bounces. Um, look at what the bowlers got for a second. Um, I almost feel like I should back out. There were two air defenses here. Both are down. Uh, bomb tower over here is down. All these defenses, all these defenses, these. The king and the wizards helped a little bit over here. But that's a good third of the base almost. Um, at least a quarter of it just from the wall wrecker. And then it just makes that Lalo so easy um, to push these balloons through. Even though there's all these lava pups from the CC, it doesn't even matter. I'm barely able to get rid of all my balloons by the time this base is crushed. So more attacks to show. But one of the major points I want to make during this video is that... Uh, how do I word this? You don't want to invest that much with your wall wrecker because the odds of it actually getting into the base, it, it, it's not worth it for the amount of troop space you have to invest. Um, let me move on to the next attack and then I'll talk a little bit more about that. We're kind of going out of order here, number 15. Um, basically, the wall wrecker is so nice because you can send it exactly where you want it. You ha it takes absolutely no troop space to funnel it. All you have to do is tank for it to allow it to get as far as you want it to get. So in some of these attacks we're seeing two golems, um, a bunch of bowlers, and uh, baby dragon for the funnel. Just a very very big troop space investment which isn't necessarily bad. Um, like this one there is going to be value gotten but at the same time if you don't have to invest in funneling anything else Sometimes it's best just to send the wall wrecker in with the bowlers inside of it, rage, heal, and freeze, and take that value and then save both the extra troop space in damage and the extra troop space that you would have to use to funnel it. Um, because the wall wrecker funnels itself, you can save that troop space for hogs or balloons or whatever else you're doing to the base. So in this case, I will say that there was a lot of value not just from the boulders and the wrecker, but also the heroes. Um, this base is set up to have these Teslas make it difficult because the boulders can't reach them uh, from those initial compartments they entered through. So it does make it a little bit tricky, um, but he still gets pretty good value. The queen is still alive, she'll help out here, and the hogs just make their way around. So it was a pretty good attack. Um, and sometimes there's just too much. Even with a rage, a heal, and as I recommend, a freeze on your boulders, they're gonna hop out and there's just gonna be too much targeting them they're not going to get the value you want um, that was probably the case for this base so you got to send more in that kill squad also sometimes it's too difficult to get your wall record to where you want it to go because there's too much damage also probably the case for this base maybe there's a single inferno right in the way to the point where you have to invest a bit of troop space to get it far enough and at that point you might as well bring more damage behind it now um if you can, I think it's very powerful to just send your heroes and the wall wrecker with maybe a few giants to tank. But if you're going to invest, you can make a big investment and go with uh, both tanks in terms of golems or giants. We saw golems here. We'll see more golems, I think, as well as additional bowlers of your own to really get the, the really make it worth it if you're going to make that investment. Now, we're going to go on to base number 17 here. Um, this one was a very similar attack and when you don't have those initial multi-infernos the, the two golem approach can be valuable but we'll see pretty much all the the value here is gotten from that wall wrecker 
Um, a lot of the stuff he sends in is not going to actually, um, it's, it's not going to end up doing damage in the core. It's mainly the queen a little bit, but mostly the bowlers inside that wall wrecker. So you ask yourself, well, what's all this extra troop space? Two baby dragons, two golems, a bunch of wizards. What's this all going towards? A lot of it is the tanking. Um, it's hard to put a price on tanking for your wall wrecker because it's the, the difference between having your wall wrecker get to the core and having it get like one compartment in is it's everything. That's the entire attack is getting this wall wrecker as far as possible. Um, especially because it does take out defenses along the way. That's not trivial either. So you'll see the wall wrecker, because of the two golem investment, is going to um, push extremely far into the base here, has the rage, has the heal, and you can see they're double bouncing that multi inferno. They're taking out the archer tower, getting the bomb tower bounced. They're going to get the king here, those two air defenses. I think maybe some bounces off the air defenses as well. No, not quite there. Uh, cannon's too far away. But cleared out everything in their reach and that's the power of the bowler with the rage and the heal these are maxed level four bowlers coming out of the wall wrecker they're pretty tanky and under a heal spell it's difficult to kill them um, and you definitely can't kill them in any big numbers as long as there's not a balloon dropping a bomb on them from the cc which does happen surprisingly a lot um, as well as as long as there's not like any kind of extraordinary damage coming at them uh, they can last a very long time so anyway, um, that is that for that attack. And like I said, it is important to use that tanking to get your wall wrecker very far. The only thing I am a little wary of is spending too much in funneling because oftentimes you're maybe just funneling your king and your queen, which aren't that important in comparison to the wall wrecker, assuming there's not like a big dragon or even a baby dragon in the CC, which can make it more difficult. But if you have your poison, if you have your freeze, you can still be okay. Um, even if a baby dragon type CC comes out, just make sure you freeze that um, and the bowlers should still get some good value before they go down. Okay, this next one just has the one golem and a bunch of giants. So uh, once again, we're looking at big investments in the kill squad. Um, a, very different than the first attack I showed, my own attack, where it was basically just sending in the wall wrecker and the heroes and just letting that deploy inside the base. The difference is, of course, so we have these single infernos, um, a lot of damage preventing the wall wrecker from getting as far as we'd like it. So I am a fan of when you can picking out a more remote location on the base, sending the wall wrecker in there, deploying it, getting the value there, rather than going the exact opposite end of the base and having to go into more damage. But in this case, it's inevitable. All the value, you have to go through these single infernos and the wall wrecker might deploy a little early here. We'd like it in the core, of course, but it would, it would have taken a lot to get the wall wrecker all the way to the core. So here they still get pretty good value. Um, they're able to uh, second bounce a lot of defenses. So that entire core does go down. The only difference is they don't take out things like the king, the bomb tower, the cannon, and possibly second bounces onto these things as well. So it gets to the point where you're pretty much almost pushing through the entire base if that's the route you want to go. He chose to go just a slightly bit lighter and then spend more in the hogs and being able to bring three heals for them. Uh, the queen, I think, does end up coming back into the base, which is very nice here. Has a good poison for the back end. Um, that was one thing we didn't see a freeze spell, but it definitely paid off being able to poison the king and those skellies off the hogs. And then they'll finish right here on like a giant bomb, but they'll be okay. Just one giant bomb with a few of the smaller bombs near it. And the king lays off them here. So very nice stuff to Tornado Top Hat. We have one more attack to take a look at. It is actually a Frozen Witch attack, but that's kind of the original inspiration of the Bowler Wall Wrecker with the Rage and the Heal. Because, um, and I've made videos on this in the past. Um, what base is it? 34. I've made videos in the past about how you want to do the frozen witch attack. And I always emphasize the key is to get your wall wrecker to that. There's that one point in the base where if you deploy it, it can just absolutely destroy the core of the base and start to second bounce the back end. It's all about using your freezes to get your wall wrecker far enough. Um, people sometimes use the rage and the heal on like the heroes or the witches 
No, it's all about the bowlers inside the wall wrecker. So this base was great because you can freeze the single Inferno as well as like three other defenses on top of it. So the free spells get great, great value here. And then the witches on either sides have the healers. There's no air defenses here. So there's pretty, um, a lot of stuff that indicates frozen witch right here. Um, the wall wrecker continuing the push. I love how he's using these freezes nice and early. You don't want to be that guy left with three freezes and like no actual troops left up at the end. Use those freezes early and he's definitely not afraid to do that. The wall wrecker gets just far enough. Um, the freeze on the expos and the queen actually was pretty good because there was a lot of damage. Wants to make sure the bowlers don't get shot down by the queen who does a lot of damage and can kind of two shot some of these bowlers here. Um, but anyway, they take out the core then they split off, uh, bounce off the bomb towers here onto some mortars. Just very, very good value from these bowlers and um, the witches along the outside finish things up. So this is kind of the OG uh, wall wrecker, bowler, rage, heal combo. That's what this comes from. But as you guys saw in my first attack, as you saw in some of the later attacks that used bigger kill squads, um, it's all about that, uh, that wall wrecker um, being able to put those bowlers exactly where you want them. It's a tank, it is a funnel, it's invaluable. Um, people talk about the wall wrecker being equal to like a golem and 10 wall breakers. It's almost more than that because it's it's not just the fact that it tanks and that it breaks walls, but it also houses troops. So it's putting troops right in the middle of the base with predictable pathing down to the tile, um, which is extremely valuable. So take advantage of that, look to use it um, both with light kill squads and with heavy kill squads depending on how how much it's going to take to get it to where you need to get it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bisectatron out.